Better fuel efficiency with simple low cost tricks. Increasing the spark gap improves engine efficiency. From Gadget Man Land, home of the Gadget Man Groove, we are changing the planet one person in one engine at a time. GadgetmanGroove.com. Today is October the 4th of 2012, and I'm in the shop and I'm just getting my FGA up and running. You can see I've got it taken apart there. Uh, because the, it took a beating, a real beating on, uh, in the move. And I'm just hoping we can get ready in time for this weekend. Now, uh, I did a zero cal on it. And uh, you can see it's still reading knocks when we're in a perfectly open environment. Uh, we're going to try zero, try zero cal on it, which is calibration. And there we go. Clear the existing data. And try that again. Because... I know there's not any knocks here, at least not in any parts per million quantity you can count. And what the target today is going to be this one right here. Now, I'm actually not going to do the groove on it. And what I am going to do is I'm just going to take the spark plugs, which they're located under a panel right there on the side. And, uh, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to run it first and see what, if I can get a decent baseline. Uh, and then I'm just going to increase the spark gap. Um, that whatever I feel is appropriate, I'm going to jack it up by at least 20% and put it back in and see what kind of difference that makes uh, and uh, then uh, take it from there. Anyway, we'll see you in a minute. Alright, now we have a, uh, we, we calibrated it and we've got, uh, I'm turning the pump on now, and we've got zeros. Alright, well, a little bit of hydrocarbons because I did run the lawnmower in here. So let's go ahead and start this thing up and uh, see what happens here. I uh, better set on it. Got to press the brake down. Another one of them safety features I'm going to get rid of. You can hear it now. Probably can't even hear me, but there it is. Now, still running zeros. But this is the hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Oxides of nitrogen, oxygen, and your perceived air fuel ratio. So let's see what happens when I stick this in the tailpipe. This is an unmodified engine. It usually takes about eight seconds. And then it starts to populate. You see the hydrocarbons coming up. See, it's reading a high of 5103, which is not right. Uh, supposed to clear out all the existing numbers. So let's do this. Reset. That should zero everything out. Or maybe it didn't. Okay. Alright, anyway. Well, you can see the screen flashing if it matches with the pixels on the, or the screenshots of the camera. But uh, I think we've got some good numbers there to go with. Now I'm going to stop a minute, I'm going to write these down, and then I'm just going to adjust the spark plugs and see what happens. Alright, so you can hear that my little crash is running back. I think it might have a little water in the gas. Uh, of course, it's, it's a lawnmower. Uh, there is the emissions coming out of it, and you can see the hydrocarbons all jumped up to 695 there. What I've done is I've written down the max values that across the board that I found on this. Well, it's peaked out uh, here in a second. You'll see, so 546 was what it peaked out. It's actually up 695. You see, it's, they're fluctuating. On these small engines, they do quite a bit. Uh, but that's, that's the numbers that we have all across the board. So. Uh, again, oh yeah, I'll, I'll tell you one more time. Hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, oxygen, and the air fuel ratio. Hey, I'm going to see if I can't get those numbers to stabilize just a little bit, just by adjusting the spark plugs. All right, now I've got the spark plugs out. <coughs> they look like they've been there for a couple of years, judging by the dirt on them. But uh, what I did was I checked them. I pulled up my feeler gauge. I don't, I don't like those little wheels. I just don't trust them because they're made by China. And they never send us the best. Uh, not to my knowledge, unless you pay dearly for it. 
So I did was I took the took the feeler gauge, and if you guys don't know how to use one of these, uh, actually on the on the thing itself, you may be able to see the numbers. Let's see if I can roll it just right for you. But they have numbers on there. These are what's called go no go feeler gauge. There you can see the numbers. I'm at that angle right there, I think. Um, anyway, uh, try to get the angle just right for you. And Anyway, what you see, there's 13, that's 15, even if you can't see, they're there. And the next one up would be 14 and 16. So what this is, or 15 and 16, so what this is, uh, uh, this is 15 and 16. And the thickness here, the no-go has, a, has a couple thousandths of an inch off the end. You can tell it's not very much, but you can see it, see the discoloration on the end. That's just where they ground it off, two thousandths of an inch less. All right, so I measured with this, and it comes up to about 31,000. So I'm assuming that should have been 32,000. And what I do is I'm going to jack this up by 20%. Now, what I'll do then is I'll take my feeler gauge, and I'll find the two, that uh, 32 times 1.2, or increasing it by 20%, would be adding uh, 6.4 thousandths. So 32 would be come then... 38 thousandths, and we'll just add 6 thousandths at a time. Take up 38 thousandths and see how it runs. Then we'll take it up to uh, 46 or 40, 44, and then we're going to we're going to see what happens. All right. So let me go ahead and do this, and then I'll get back to you, and we'll put it on the gas analyzer after the first adjustment. All right. Now what I did was I opted since we're doing with decimal points, and I'm using the two. Uh, the, the two feeler gauges that are closest to one another is to use the 20 and the 19. So in other words, we're going to close this up to, to, uh, to uh, 30, uh, 39 thousandths of an inch. And then the next time we'll go up another six thousandths or something like that. All right, anyway, I want to show you guys this right here. And I'm going to set this down where you guys can see it. And what I've done is I've added the two numbers that are found on the, on the blades together. And I come up with 39 thousandths of an inch. Well, I can see it. I don't know if you can, but their, their numbers are right there. Now, when you do this, what you'll want to do is you'll want to take something small and open up that gap right there beyond what you need. Then you take your feeler gauges as they're supposed to be set and you slide them in between the points like that. What you should get is a nice snug fit, but they should go in between the points. You can see it's catching there, okay? So that means that we've got just about the right measurement. And then we come over here and take a look at the other one and we'll find the same thing there, okay? So you just slide it in the middle there, and it, well, that one there is a little bit loose, so we're just we're going to tap it a little bit, All right? You know, be gentle with it, and if you're not gentle, if you're too gentle, then see there we go. Now we're getting it to grab. So now we've got two spark plugs set at 39 thousandths of an inch. I'm sorry, there. So you can see it's starting to grab there. Okay, that's a that's a good that's a good setting. All right. So anyway, now we're going to put these in. All right, now we've got the uh, spark plugs installed, and we're about to uh, see if it's going to start. So I'm going to set the camera down over here. Okay. And we're going to fire out. Well, as you can see, we did it open it up to 39 thousandths of an inch. Things started ran pretty good. The matter of fact, it seems to be running smoother now than it did at 32,000 7 inch. You hear it? Doesn't seem to be cutting out like it was. That's a good thing. Anyway, we're firing up the analyzer right now. Yeah, and I'm going to shut this down. So. Uh, so I don't have to holler at the camera. <laughs> Jay done nothing to me. Anyway, we're going to be uh, as soon as this fires up, we're going to be uh, uh, checking the exhaust and see what's happening. All right, back to you in a minute. Hi right, everybody. Well, I got my analyzer back up, and we're about to do the uh, test on this. Let's go ahead and fire it up first. And uh, oh, I had to move it because I had a customer come in for a mod, and uh, we're out running for parts right now. So anyway. There we go. Uh oh. Better put her in neutral head not stuff. There we go. Gonna jump off. Let's see what she has to say here. Probably the last time it's warmed up but 
we'll see. And there, you see how just put the stepper in and the exhaust. Takes about eight seconds. Let's see what you got to peek at. Now, here's a little refresher of what we had before. So, you know, sure looks a whole lot better to me. Higher oxygen content, lower carbon monoxide, lower hydrocarbons, uh, lower CO2. And that's just by increasing the spark gap by 20%. So now it's at 39 thousandths. Now, I'm going to let this run for a minute and make sure that the numbers are stable, but, you know, you can hear it running now. You heard it cutting out before I did the adjustment. And I don't make a liar out of it. But it's definitely running smoother. See, that hesitation caused that little spike. You can hear it. Anyway, I'm going to let it warm up a little bit. We'll come back and check in just a second. I ain't going to shut it off. I ain't going to shut it off until it's running. But there's no need to take it up your time. Alright, now it's been running for two more minutes. That's about all. Okay, I gave it a little bit of gas and let it charge up a little bit. And let's take another look here at the numbers. There's the old ones. See, the hydrocarbons dropping off so dramatically is a sure sign of increased efficiency because that fuel is now being burnt inside the engine. Very, very, very important. Okay? So the CO is down. The uh, carbon, the CO2 is down, hydrocarbons down, oxygen content, oh, well, down a little bit, and uh, the air fuel ratio is perceived to be a little bit higher. But it's a lot more stable. If you look, that 62 is holding really steady at that. Yeah, it's not doing the jumping like it was uh, beforehand, because it was just warming up. Anyway, I'm going to jot these numbers down, then I'm going to increase the gap by another 20%. And uh, we'll see what happens next, shall we? All right, now what I did was I skipped over the, uh, the 46 thousandths, whatever it was. I went right to 51 thousandths on this. So I'm going to start this thing up and we'll uh, see what it does. If it'll start, right? It's 51 thousandths now. The factory says 32 thousandths. I don't know why the knocks went up. Maybe a fictitious reading. Now, if these are correct, that's good. This, this one's not. I know that one's not. I don't know why it did that. But it is kind of cold. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero it out. I'll leave the lawnmower running, zero it out, get it all back to zero, and then test it again. Alright, now I just started it back up, but the nozzle is there, you can see the nozzle right here in my hand, so it's not the exhaust showing that three points knock. We don't know what it is. Uh oh, it wants to run with me now. Okay, let's lock the brake. Anyway, all right, so let's see 
make sure it's, uh, it accelerates down as low as it go. Sounds like it's running just a little bit faster to me. Oh. Tripping over my hoses. Alright. Let's get back over here and take a look. So here's the old numbers. My goodness! Or even lower yet, the hydrocarbons are about half of what they were before. Uh, carbon monoxide, 1.5%. My goodness! Still less of the pollutants coming out. 1.5 on the carbon dioxide. 17% oxygen. Now that's what I like to see. Alright? So, with that last number of 42 parts per million on the hydrocarbons, that means we've cut the HC emissions on this engine by a third. And you can see, uh oh, I must have hit something there. Oh well. But, that's okay. That's not too shabby. Now, shall we see what 60 thousandths of an inch will do? I think we will. Alright, now what I do is I'll set them at 60 thousandths of an inch just to see what would happen. We've got some spectacular spectators there. Say hi, Debbie. Hey. Say hi, Mary. Hi. That's your car over there I'm working on, right? Yes. Oh, good. You, know, you wait, can't, can't wait to see what I can do for it, right? Yes. Good. That's a good answer. <laughs> Alright, so now at 60 thousandths of an inch, this thing shouldn't even start. Let's see what happens. Oh my! It's running! It almost doubled the manufacturer recommended specs on the spark plug gap. Now, shall we see what the emissions look like at 60,000 of an inch? The measurement of an inch of efficiency is how little emissions there are coming out. Now, I'm just putting this snipper in there. Now, let's look. Again, the knocks went up, but that was atmospheric. Now, just watch it. Did the numbers go down again? Uh-uh. But you know, this is against the law. You know, the law of being a kick. You're supposed to do everything the manufacturer tells you. But that is less than half of the hydrocarbon emissions that's coming out of that thing before. That's not too shabby. Not too shabby. So let's see what 60,000 did. Compared to 51 or 51 thousandths, okay? There's those numbers. Uh, my eyes don't go on bad. From 62 to 37. Carbon monoxide down again. Carbon dioxide down again. NOx, well, it's still at zero. 16% oxygen content now. How's that happening? Guys, if this doesn't prove to you that the manufacturer may know best, but he don't always tell it to us, then I, I think it's time for you to take the earwax out and start listening. Uh, they do not mean the best for you and challenge everything they say. That's the only way to find out what's best for you in your life. So I'll say God bless y'all richly and warmly, and remember as always to smile for a stranger today. You will both be glad you did. Bye-bye.